This is Bishop Dale Broder. Thank you so much for joining our YouTube channel today. If this is a blessing to you, I want to encourage you to like it and then click the subscribe button and then turn on notification. Hit that little notification bell so that you never ever miss another one of our videos. And then if you're in the Metro Atlanta area on a Sunday, check out one of our exhilarating services at 8.30 a.m., 11 a.m., or 6 o'clock p.m. Be seated. Our text today comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, focusing on verse 16 through verse 18. I'm reading from the contemporary English version. Notice there these words. We never give up. Our bodies are gradually dying, but we ourselves are being made stronger each day. These little troubles are getting us ready for an eternal glory that will make all our troubles seem like nothing. Things that are, that are seen, don't last forever, but things that are not seen are eternal. That's why we keep our minds on the things that cannot be seen. And I'm going to read this same passage in, in the message version of the scriptures. Notice, so we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside, it often looks like things are falling apart on us. On the inside, where God is making new life, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. These hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times, the lavish celebration prepared for us. There's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow. But the things we can't see now will last forever. I'm speaking today simply from the subject, something so strong inside. Something so strong inside. Now listen, I want you to think of the inner person, the inner person, as it being a smaller wheel within a larger wheel. Think of the inner person being the smaller wheel and the outer person being the larger wheel. That was a song that they used to sing in my church growing up. It, it was entitled, Ezekiel Saw the Wheel. Way up in the middle of the air, Ezekiel Saw the Wheel. Way in the middle of the air. You remember? And, 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 and it mentioned that the little wheel runs by faith and the big wheel runs by the grace of God. A wheel in a wheel, way up in the middle of the air. And, and this is the way that life works. He's talking about, though the outward man is perishing, the inward man is being renewed day by day. Now, I, I want you to, since it's, it's, it, it's talking about the inner and the outer, I want you to think of, you, you do realize the difference between a tire and a wheel. You know, the tire is the outer part. That's the rubber. But the wheel is what we call the rims. You know what rims are. Folks sitting on 22s and 24s. You, those are rims. Those are rims. You see, the rim doesn't hit the road. But the tires the, is where the rubber meets the, the road. And what wears down is the outer you don't have to replace your rims. You have to replace your, your tires. And the only reason that you have to replace your tires where the rubber meets the road is because the rubber of the exterior tire has the friction of the road that wears thin. And it's whenever you have to deal with human beings. That's the friction of the road. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That will wear you thin. That's, that, that's what will turn your hair gray. My hair was all black before I got in ministry. <laughs> no, you, this, this, is, this is heredity here. My, my dad was salt and pepper in his 20s. And he wasn't a pastor. But I have seen it do it. You, here's a good thing. Your hair will either turn gray or it'll turn loose. <laughs> I'm glad mine didn't turn loose. It's easier to fix gray than it is to fix balding. I'll just tell you that now. 
But when you've got the, the wheel, the outer part, your, your rubber is always wearing thin. And if you keep riding on it sometimes without changing it because the outward man is perishing, but there's something so strong on the inside. My rim is strong. You ever had it where, where your inside, your, your, your will on the inside is strong? You still got a strong attitude. You still got a strong will. You still got a strong mind. You still got a strong spirit. But, you know, I, I mean, it wasn't until I, I, I got in my 50s that, you know, that I, I couldn't spring out of the bed as rapidly as I, as I used to. I didn't even realize I had a body until I got in my 50s. And then you get ready. You, you have to prepare. You get a certain age, you have to prepare to make sudden movements. You can throw something out of whack by just moving, shifting. And see, your mind on the inside, you're still feeling, you know, like you are what you're used to because the inward man is being renewed day by day. It's this exterior one where the knees that are feeling some impact from being on the pavement, where the hips, where your back, anybody ever, you know, what you, you reminded of the wear and tear? You ever woke up one morning and, and you had a crook in your neck and you, somebody called your name, you got to turn your whole body around? See, it, it is a reminder of all of this exterior stuff. I mean, you know, when, you, when you're in college, you, you, you go down to the varsity and eat greasy chili dogs and French fries and onion rings and all of that kind of stuff. Try that in your 60s. Doing that three times a week and see how you feel. See, you're constantly reminded that though the outward man is perishing, and the only reason that it is perishing is because we are dealing with friction on a hard surface that is unyielding. And you see, the rubber yields more than the asphalt. And so we're the ones that's wearing out the most. So there has to be a renewing process, but I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. I, I, I would rather deal with, with having a little issues with my knees, even though I don't have that yet. I'm so grateful to the Lord. I'm so grateful. But I, I, I'd, I'd rather deal with issues with my knees than issues with my mind. Because the mind is an internal organ. And, and, and I'm just telling you, there's something so strong on the inside. I love something that M.D. Bat, Batcock said. He said this, that the tests of life are to make, not break us. Trouble may demolish a man's business, but build up his, his character. And the blow at the outward man may be the greatest blessing to the inward man. Listen to that. The blow at the outward man may be the greatest blessing to the inner man. If God then puts or permits anything hard in our lives, be sure that the real peril, the real trouble, is that we shall lose if we flinch or rebel. Because sometimes the stuff that makes us struggle is the stuff that makes us strong. I, I, I just remind you of this. I, I, I have never seen a person who, listen to me carefully, I've never seen a person who is strong, who had an easy past. Are you listening to me? I, I've, just, I've never seen a strong person with an easy past. It is because of the difficulty of your journey. It is because of the mountains that you had to cross. It is because of the discrimination that you had to get over. It is because of the prejudices that you had to fight against, the stereotypes. It is because of your gender issue. That, that's the stuff that made you strong. That's what made you strong. It was the struggle that was built into your journey. And I remind you again that God is not concerned about your comfort and your convenience, but he's concerned about your development. That's why he's not here to just make you on a, on a flowery bed of ease. Because the stuff that does not kill you makes you strong. There's something so strong on the inside. There's something so strong on the inside. Something so strong on the inside. And, and uh, we find that when tires wear out, that's the outer thing. 
tires wear out because of alignment issues. Alignment. You got to make sure that your exterior life is aligned toward your core values in your heart, toward the principles upon which you were raised according to biblical principles. It's when you live according to your, your core. See, people, uh, they, they have this, this trembling when you get up to certain speeds because their lives are out of alignment. And they're living exteriorly in a way that is in opposition to the core values of righteousness on the inside. Or sometimes they have a bent wheel. That's when your rim is bent. That's the danger of driving on a flat. That you'll mess up your rims. And, and you see, there are too many people who are in such a hurry that they won't fix their flat. And, and I'm just telling you, your life, uh, if you got a bad attitude, a bad attitude is just like a flat tire. You're not going anywhere until you change it. But there are some people with bad attitudes that keep on rolling. And they are bending their rim. They are damaging the rim. And you create a much more severe problem. That's why we have warped people that then go in public and do heinous crimes. Because they have bent their rim. By living out of congruence with the inner core being of the righteous values that God established for mankind. It's amazing. People that are driving on bent rims, living out of congruence, and that means when their life tries to get up to speed that they are shaking terribly and they're doing things that cost you more to repair, really more to repair. And then they get sometimes mud or debris on the wheel and that can cause tremors at certain speeds because something gets dirty in your moral code. And you start losing your wheel weight. Let me just remind you of this. That people are often attracted to others by what they see on the outside. But people are often repulsed by what they discover on the inside. Let me say it to you this way. Most people are hired for what they can do. But they are fired for who they are. You are hired for your competences. You are fired for your attitude. I would rather deal with an incompetent person who makes me smile every day than to have somebody with a bad attitude. A bad attitude is a bent rim. It causes tremors. Tremors. Even at low speeds. When your rim is bent, they're damaging your whole vehicle. They're making the ride uncomfortable for everybody who is in that mode of transportation. And so this is why we have to always be careful about everything that is happening in our world. Because there are different things that can come to bend your rim. But when there's something so strong on the inside, it's the inside that really matters in the end. It's the inside. Uh, I'm reminded how Jacob fell in love with Rachel because she was beautiful on the outside. And I'm not saying that she wasn't a nice person, but the Bible just really highlights her beauty. I mean, when he first kissed her, he, he fell on his knees and wept. <laughs> I mean, he just started crying. I mean, you know, he, Rachel was a, she was a bad mama jama. I mean, you know, <laughs> Rachel just had it going on. She Jacob was struck by it. And you know the story how when he, when he married and the next morning he discovered that uh, the daddy said, you know, we don't let the younger girl marry before the older girl. This, you, you, that's my oldest daughter. He found that out the next morning. You know, had that been in this day, he would have found it out that night because he would have had his cell phone and then he put the light in their face and he would have... <laughs> But let me just tell you this, he fell in love, Jacob fell in love with Rachel because of the exterior beauty on the outside. But in the closing days, he fell in love with Leah, who the Bible said was tender eyes. We assumed that she was cross-eyed, something was wrong with her eyes. The Bible says she was tender eyes. It, they would, you couldn't tell who she was looking at. <laughs> but despite 
her exterior flaws, Jacob so fell in love with this woman that he gave instructions to his children that when I die, don't bury me with Rachel. Bury me with Leah. And it was this woman who was unloved. And the Bible says that because she was unloved, because her exterior was not all that, but on the inside there was something so strong. That was quality in Leah on the inside. This was a woman, even though she didn't look all that good, she produced more children for him than any of the other three wives. Homegirl could produce. And the Bible says that because she was unloved, God opened her wound. God has a way of making you productive in the face of people that don't like you. Oh my God. You're just, when you serve God, you watch what God can do. You watch what God can do. They, they don't even have to like what, what, you can, what you look like, but what you produce, God says, I'll let you produce something. And, and let me just tell you this. It was not Rachel, the beautiful one, who produced the lineage that Leah was able to produce. Leah had six sons, and one of those sons was Judah, the tribe through which Jesus came. Jesus didn't come through the beautiful one. He came down through the one that was rejected. The tribe that Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Judah's mama was Leah, not Rachel. And when he died, he says, bury me with Leah. I want to be buried in the place where Leah is buried. That's not where Rachel was buried. So God knows how to turn things because there was something so strong. And let me just tell you, when you feel rejected and hated on, just hold on. Just hold on. God's got a plan. God has a plan. God has a plan. There's something so strong on the inside. There's something so strong on the inside. It's what's on the inside that matters the most. It's what's on the inside that matters the most. I mean, food is nice and pretty on the table, and I just appreciate culinary arts, but they're putting all kind of decorative stuff and parsley and all of these different things are on the plate. But you know, you can't just worship food on a plate. Food has got to get in you. It does you no good just being on the plate. It's got to get in you. The power doesn't happen until it gets in you. I remember going to see a lady that was in the hospital dying of cancer. When I walked in, she, she had her Bible open, lying on the area of her body where the cancer was. She had colon cancer, and she had it lying across her lower abdomen. And, and, and I walked in, and I, I saw it, and I knew what she was trying to do. And, 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 and I said, sweetheart, this is not a magical lucky charm. I said, this word does not work because it is on you. It has to get in you. And then I, I stood there for the next few moments and walked through the book with her of various healing scriptures that I wanted her to Put, pull the page back, bend the page back and highlight it and read these every day. Get it in your spirit. Get it in your spirit. Get it in your spirit. Get it in your heart. And read this every day. The word does the work. The word does the work. Word does the work. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. I, I shared with her the power of the scriptures in Isaiah 53 5. For he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. He corroborated that in 1 Peter 2 24 and, and that who himself you know being crucified there that with his stripes ye were healed. 1 Peter 2.24 says ye were healed. It was prophesying, so he was talking about the power of the word. It's just the power of the word. And so I just walked through the book and gave it to her because I said, this is not going to do you very much good just being on you. It doesn't do any good until it gets in you. And in the same way, water is not destructive to you because water gets on you. Water is destructive when water gets in you. Water has no capacity to drown you. If it's on you, it has every capacity to drown you if it gets in you. And this is the very reason why we have to be so careful about the environments under which we get. Because the reason that we can still live saved in Babylon is because we don't allow what is around us to get in us. That's why we can live saved in Babylon. Because we don't allow what is around us to get 
in us. And remember, what gets people saved is what we are able to get in them. I love something that Mac Anderson said. Mac Anderson said, just remember, people are like sticks of dynamite. The power is on the inside, but nothing happens until the fuse gets lit. And here's the good thing is that the Bible teaches that our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire, and he is the one that lights our fuse. God can speak to you, and when God speaks to you, he lights a fire in you. He lights a fire in us. Remember on the day of Pentecost? You remember that in Acts chapter 2, verse 3? There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire that sat on each of them. God was lighting their fire. That's all he was doing. We, we're dynamite, but we need somebody to light our fire. And until you have come in contact with the God who is a consuming fire, then you're just a dynamite with a wick hanging out of you and nothing to light it. And so you have no life-changing dunamis power until you have been in contact with the God who is a consuming fire. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad about what happens. It happens on the inside. That was a song that we also grew up in my church singing entitled glory to his name the down at the cross where my savior he died down where for cleansing from sin i cried there to my heart not my my knees and my ankles there to my heart was the blood applied glory to his name see this thing has to be applied to the inside Because what matters most is what's on the inside. There's something so strong on the inside. Now listen. Fasting weakens the outer person but strengthens the inner person. Isn't that amazing? Fasting. It weakens the outer person but it strengthens the inner person. Though the outward man is perishing, the inward man is being renewed day by day. Your inner person is your core. That's your core. And listen, in order to strengthen your back... You oftentimes have to strengthen your core muscles. And sometimes when you're trying to strengthen your back, they'll put you on one of those exercise balls. You see those big balls? You know what they do? They destabilize you. You always feel destabilized when you're in the process of strengthening your core. So whenever you're strengthening your core, you're put into a position where you start feeling very destabilized in order to strengthen what is the core. Because when you're in an area of weakness, in order to build strength, you feel really wobbly and unstable at that moment. But strengthening the core will temporarily make you feel destabilized. It's totally normal. It's totally normal. I want you to know this, that God has called us to be fishers of men. Fishers of people. That's what he's called us to be. He called the disciples to be fishers of people. I just want to ask you, how are you doing on your job? This is the job description, fishers of people. What what you catch? What you catch this week? Fishers of people. I want you to take a look at this little video clip. Giant Trevallis. Usually, they are solitary hunters, but about 50 of them have come here from neighboring reefs, attracted by this abundance of potential prey. The fledglings stay out of the water if they can. They even drink on the wing. If the Trevally are to catch one now, they have to up their game. So there is a fish here that, amazingly, 
has a brain capable of calculating the airspeed, altitude, and trajectory of a bird. Now, let me tell you why I showed you this clip. This week, I was in Washington, D.C., and I was, I, was with, I was having breakfast one morning with T.L. Osborne's daughter, the great miracle worker from Africa. I was sharing with her. I said, you know, I've been just so inspired by your parents. I said, I was inspired by your mother, Daisy, who in Africa took a, a, a villager, brought her dead baby, put it in this woman's mother's arms. Daisy Osborne's arms. Daisy Osborne walked around with that baby. She just started praying, just praying, just praying. And God brought that baby back to life. The baby started crying and she handed the living baby back to the mother, a miracle worker. And I'm here having breakfast in D.C. this week with, with the daughter. We were having breakfast one morning. And her daughter said to me, it's just out of the clear blue. She said, we are the bait. We are the bait. Now listen, God says, I'm calling you to be fishers of people. Fishers of people. We are the bait. We are the bait. We are the bait. And then another man overheard our conversation and he said, I'm a fisherman. And he said, let me add something to that. He says the good sized fish only eat live bait. Live bait. We are the bait. But it's got to be alive. Are you listening? We are the bait. That's why if you put a bait in the water, you got to have something that looks like it's alive, even if it is dead. But the best bait, you go to a bait shop, a tackle shop. They sell live bait because the biggest fish eat live bait. They, they, they're not looking for something on a hook. They're looking for something that is moving through the water. They're looking for something with life in it. If you're going to attract people, you can't be dead yourself. Listen, we're the bait. We're the bait. No wonder he said, present your body as a living sacrifice. Live bait. Live bait. Live bait. Listen, live bait. This is why Gandhi said... That he says if the world were introduced to the Christ of Christianity, it would receive him. But instead, the world is introduced to the Christians of Christ and it rejects him. They don't like the bait. Maybe the bait is dead. And real fish want live bait. That food that they eat, you know, it's, it's, you know bigger fish eat smaller fish. But they are alive. They don't, they, they're not trying to find something that is beached on the side of the, 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 the ocean. They want their stuff fresh. You're talking about fresh seafood? It's the one that's still wiggling. I've, I've been over in Asia, and it freaked me out when somebody watching this lady put some kind of octopus in her mouth, and the tentacles were still alive coming outside on her cheek. I nearly passed out at the table. <laughs> But I'm like, here's a woman doing this, and if a man passes out, I said, what will they say concerning the bishop? <laughs> and she's, it, I was recalling <laughs> at the table as homegirl politely took the tentacle that was wrapped around the corner of her mouth, hanging out, still moving, wiggling, and pushed it <laughs> on the inside and finished eating and I nearly lost my lunch. I'm like, I have done a little sushi, but it wasn't that fresh. But they eat live bait. He's made us fishers of people. You better make sure that when you go out into the sea, 
testing the waters that you got the Zoe life of God on the inside of you. No wonder, no wonder, no wonder folks don't want to be like you if you did. But if you got joy in you, unspeakable and full of glory, and looking like you got the power of the Holy Ghost and living in victory, and you got something to be glad about, and even though things may not be perfect, but you can say, Lord, I thank you this day. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I tell you, a couple of months ago, I had another man of a different faith in my home doing some work. And, and I asked him, I said, what, what, what faith are you? He said, I'm Jewish. He said, he said, I bet you're a Christian. I said, how did you know? He says, because you guys are always so happy. <laughs> He recognized life. He recognized life. He recognized life. It's almost like the difference between a classically trained musician that's playing in the symphony and a jazz musician. You know, the jazz folks just look like they're having more fun. And so it's one of those issues of where he's called us to be fishers of men. But the fish eat live bait. We are the bait. Because if people don't like you, they don't want your Jesus. When was the last time that you ordered a big order from somebody that you hated their guts? If people don't like you, they will help you fail. But if people like you, they will help you win. You have to win people to yourself before you can win them to Christ. It's not about us, but we've got to be live bait. Because if they don't like you, they don't want your Jesus. Because you become the billboard for what Jesus can do on the inside of a person. And if they don't like how your insides look, they want no part of you. So we're the ones, we are the sample platter, we are the bait, and they've got to see us alive in the water. Live bait, live bait, live bait. Those fish were not looking for dead birds, they wanted live birds. They're looking for live bait. They want their bait to be moving. In him we live and move and have our being. They're looking for somebody who's doing something, somebody who's making a difference in the world, not somebody who's, it's time to make the donuts. They're looking for somebody who's full of life, enthusiasm, in theo, God on the inside, radiating on the outside. They're looking for somebody that's got the Zoe life of God in them. That's what they're looking for. Something so strong so that when they see you go through tragedy in your life, instead of your falling to pieces, they can't understand how is it that you can bury your husband and still have a smile on your face? How is it that you can bury a child and still smile and lift your hands and bless the Lord and give glory to him? How is it that you can lose your job and, be, and lose your house and yet you can still praise him with the dance and lift your hands and honor him and worship him and still be grateful and not become bitter and sinister in your attitude toward people? How is it that because there is something so strong on the inside. There is a power that is so strong. How is it that people can talk about you and speak things and write things about you in social media that are not true? How is it that they can do that and you not lose your mind and become depressed and, and, and have to take Xanax and all kinds of things in order to be able to sleep at night and something else to get up the next morning? How is it that people can cheat you, rob from you, steal from you, be dishonest, take your deposit and never do the work and you still not lose faith in humanity? How? Because there is something so strong on the inside. It's what you got on the inside. People cannot see your strength. Though the outward man is perishing, yes, the inward man is being renewed Day by something so strong, something so something so strong on the inside. They thought that they would break your spirit and you wouldn't be able to come back. They walked out of your life, they left you, they abandoned you, they didn't help you, they thought you were gonna crawl up in a ball and die. They don't understand how you can still lift your hands, how you still able to go, how you still raise your children by yourself. They don't they don't have a clue.
But there is something so strong on the inside. Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's Christ in you. He's the hope of glory. He's the hope of glory. He's the hope of the whole world. And I promise you, if you ever gave an old person the option of looking good or feeling good, they'll go with feeling good. You get a certain age, they'll let a full mustache grow. As long as they feel good. Because they realize that what's on the inside is what really matters. There is something so strong on the inside. I hope you got something out of the word of the Lord. I'm not finished, but I just got to quit. Something so strong. Something so strong. Something so strong on the inside. I'm going to ask you to just... We hope that you enjoyed that message. Don't forget to like and subscribe and then press the notification bell so that you don't miss another one of our videos. And if you want to partner with us, click the Give Now button. Thank you for what you do.